Uh, my name is Matt Siegel. Uh, I'm uh, from Optibrium. Oh, here it comes. Um, and uh, I'm just going to tell you a little bit about uh, the software that we develop and the work that we do. Um, so really at Optibrium, uh, we're focused on developing software for those end users that Alex mentioned, for the scientists who want to use all of their data, along with chem informatics algorithms, computational chemistry methods, and so on, to guide their decisions in the optimization of high quality compounds. We've got a, a great customer base ranging, as usual, all the presenters have said this, from top 10 pharma companies through the spectrum of medium and small biotechs, academic groups, not-for-profits, and so on. We have a portfolio of pro products. Um, Asterius is our I oops, Asterius is our iPad app, uh, which uh, helps sort of chemists to explore new compound ideas guided by predictive models, sort of whenever and wherever they want. Centira is a package which is a very easy to use, but powerful and dynamic data visualization tool really focused on chemistry. But our main product is Stardrop, which is what I'm going to focus on for the rest of my presentation. Now, Stardrop itself, the sort of core philosophy is this idea of multi-parameter optimization. We know that a successful, efficacious, and safe drug that makes it to the market is at the sort of sweet spot in chemistry where many different properties come into alignment. And we also know that most projects start with a hit, of course has potency against a target, but is very unlikely to have all the properties that we need. And we want to move that chemistry as quickly as possible to this area where we're most likely to find that high quality drug. On the other hand, we also want to identify the situation when that balance isn't possible. You know, the idea of we can't get potency in alignment with all the properties we need, you know, fail fast, fail cheap, absolutely, but only when confident, because we don't want to miss an opportunity due to the uncertainty in the data that we generate in drug discovery, you know, the variability in the experiments or statistical uncertainty in computational methods. So Stardrop provides a number of sort of core features that really enable that. Um, I'm not going to go into the science here, but just to name and mention what they do, um, sort of our probabilistic scoring is our approach to that multi-parameter optimization problem. It's a rigorous way that allows you to define the property profile that you require, assess all the data that you have, taking into account that uncertainty so that you can target those high quality compounds with the highest chance of success. But also looking at sort of chemical space and selection to balance quality and diversity and avoid missing those opportunities, making sure we're exploring that chemistry appropriately across the diversity that, that in, our, in our compounds and our libraries and our projects. Of course, it's all embedded in a very interactive data visualization environment, R group analysis, helping you to understand that structure activity relationship and guide the further optimization. And then also not just about looking at the data you have so far, but also thinking about what to make next how to design compounds with improved properties, something we call the glowing molecule that really helps to use the information in predictive models to highlight uh, regions on those compounds that are having the strongest influence on properties and really guide the design of compounds with improved properties. I thought I'd just take a minute as well to give you a preview about what's coming next because um, something that we're just about to release in the next few weeks um, is a, sort of a new idea about how you can sort of work with data in the context of a drug discovery project. You know, Applications, uh, Stardrop, many other applications, of course, work with sort of chemical spreadsheets or sort of form views uh, to help us to sort of summarize our data. The challenge with that is, of course, that what just gives you is just a long list of compounds to look at. Um, of course, you can sort them and change the order, but we don't really think about compounds in terms of lists. We think about the relationships between those compounds and, and, and how they are organized within the context of our project. And so what we're introducing is the idea of a, of a card view that allows you really to work the way that you think, to organize your data the way that you want to. And the sort of, the fundamental sort of um, object in this is, is a card. And a card represents a compound, and you can choose what you want to display on a card. So here I've got sort of a score against this profile of properties, my primary activity. You can drill down and see additional pages on cards of key physical chemical properties, uh, examples from our P450 predictions uh, in terms of metabolism. So that allows you to sort of get a quick overview of an individual compound, and you can move those around, you can position them in a very dynamic way to think about how you want to organize your data. But of course, we don't just think about uh, compounds individually, but in terms of groups as well. So we have this idea of a stack. You can pick up cards, drop them on top of each other, get a stack that groups those compounds together and summarizes that key data. So here you can see the sort of distribution of potency for all the compounds in this stack, and then distributions of scores, log p, and so on, really to get that overview of how those compounds are performing overall. And again, we don't think about compounds in isolation, but also about relationships between compounds. 
So links that sort of highlight those key relationships. Here's an example of an, a sort of an optimization flow through a project where you've tried something, got into a dead end, you go down, and eventually you can see you know, where that final compounds have ended up. And these links are colored to show us, in this case, the changes in potency so that you can immediately sort of identify those key transitions that give us the, that the improvement in potency that we're looking for. And now this is a, a foundation on which you can build, you can organize this however you want, represent, present your data in this way, but it also provides a foundation to use sort of more complex analyses, things like uh, clustering, activity landscapes, match molecular pairs, and so on, and provide the output of those in a very easily interpreted way that you can immediately spot those key patterns that help you to optimize your compounds. And I guess key for the audience here is, of course, you can extend this with your own methods the way you like to analyze the data and present it in this very sort of flexible and intuitive way. Now, Stardrop itself can be extended through a whole series of plugin modules, and I'm not going to go through them all. There's eight of them here from sort of predictive models of our own, building your own predictive models, idea generation and sort of de novo design, predicting P450 metabolism, 3D SAR, uh, predicting tox, and helping to sort of develop these sort of multi-parameter optimization strategies for your projects. Um, if you want to know more, I'd be happy to tell you, uh, but I will just mention that um, some of these are through collaborations with other organizations, Biostar with Digital Chemistry, Torch3D with Cresset, Derek Nexus with Lhasa Limited. And that really just goes to show sort of the integration that you can do. So we've already been discussing a lot today. No piece of software can sit in isolation. And so there are a whole range of APIs for integration of your own methods, for integration of uh, other platforms, both client and server side. Uh, we use uh, Python as our sort of standard scripting language. Um, and that really leads on to the final point, which is why I'm here today, because we're working very closely with Chemaxon to integrate Stardrop with their, uh, with their Plexus uh, package here, primarily initially around sort of library enumeration so that you can run Plexus within Stardrop, you can interact with Plexus in exactly the same way as you would expect, and then return those results instantly within Stardrop to be able to apply predictive models, bring in data, and sort of guide those decisions about design of libraries in the way that I've just very quickly described. If you'd like to see all this in action, it's great to see the pretty pictures, but it makes sense when you see sort of the dynamic and fluid way you can interact with this. I will also be at a table in the exhibition hall. So thank you very much.